Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Wednesday morning, the 9th of November, 2022, to Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America, a LCMS, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation, and I'm Pastor Ron York of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church. Coming to you this morning from my study in Oro Valley, Arizona, near Tucson, and so good to be able to welcome you this morning. Uh, this is November 9th, the day after midterm elections here in the United States, for those of you that are chiming in around the world. And uh, trusting that uh, uh, you've had a good evening and ready for another day of our Lord's grace and mercies, irrespective of the midterm elections. <laughs> and so, um, because the solutions to the world, to the, the nations, and everything that's going on is never to be found in the political arena. It, it never will be. The political arena is part of, a major part of the problem. <laughs> so it'll always be in Jesus Christ. And so that's who we advocate. That's who we uh, emphasize and we don't emphasize the political forum. So good to welcome you this morning and thank you so much for chiming in as well. It's really appreciated. And um, so my brothers and sisters this morning, our devotional is going to unpack for us uh, the subject of watching. And there's a lot of watching going on right now uh, here in the United States. There. They're still, you know, tabbing up the ballots and people are commenting and and uh, there's a lot of anticipate, anticipation and a lot, of, a lot of people are watching. And so we're going to be talking about that, what we should be watching for. And uh, so I pray that that will bless us, inspire us, encourage us and give us genuine real peace this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to share with you a little word from uh, Dr. Martin Luther. Um, and uh, he, he's going to be talking about the criticalness of faith and the seriousness of faith and that faith heals. And uh, the passages of Scripture that he's using as a foundation is Matthew 9.21 where this one woman who had a blood disorder for a long time uh, stated to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. And so her faith was so strong that she believed that she could obtain help if only she could touch his garment of Jesus. She did not deem it necessary to come to him with many words and present her complaint and pray that he would have mercy on her and help her nor did others pray for her, okay? Um, but she thought only to reach him and touch him, for she thought if only she could do this, she would receive help. She neither doubted his power nor his willingness to help, nor did her faith deceive her, for as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, the fountain of blood was stopped. Hence, you may see what faith which clings to the person of Christ is and does, namely a heart that regards him as the Lord and Savior, the Son of God, through whom God reveals himself and bestows upon us his grace, assuring us that through him and for his sake he will hear and help us. And he does. So, I pray that that is a source of inspiration and encouragement this morning um, tremendously. Um, and so I'm going to share with you um, <clears throat> response of prayer one, and I pray that that's going to comfort you as well this morning. And uh, so, holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. And so taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, this morning, as we always do, we want to profess the Christian faith, and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture that our devotional is going to unpack for us on watching is Psalm 13, but also Matthew chapter 25, specifically in verse 13. And Jesus has this, these words for us this morning. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour that he returns. I think that's going to be soon, and I kind of hope so, because of the way things are. But he also wants to take a look at Psalm 15. And uh, as we look at our world today, and we look at things going on in the United States, and so on and so forth. Um, I think we see a lot of a lot of things on the horizon that testify to the nearness of our Lord's return. So allow me to read Psalm 15. It says, O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamely and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, and takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest, and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved, that person is a rarity today, okay? But that's the admonition that is rendered in this particular psalm. And so let's see how Dr. Martin Luther prays this psalm for us this morning. He says, O Lord, our gracious and merciful Father, please grant us uh, steadfastly to believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to fearlessly confess his name before men, to the reproving of the unbelieving and the wicked. Strengthen us by your Spirit to walk honestly as in the light of day, both privately and in public. Amen. Tremendous prayers from uh, Dr. Martin Luther on that particular subject. So, praise be to God. So, let's see what it means to watch and to watch for Jesus' soon return. One word, watch. The word is heavy with meaning. Let's look at this well-known parable of Jesus. It teaches us something important. Ten virgins were waiting for the bridegroom to appear. Notice these are Christians because they're waiting for the, for the return of the bridegroom. All ten. Okay? Five were wise and kept their lamps filled with oil. Five were foolish and were not prepared when the bridegroom finally came. So let me stop right there. You've got ten Christians. Five of them were wise, the other five were foolish. The five that were foolish were not prepared. Yet they were still Christians. How can you be a Christian and not prepared? That's the question. Uh, 
when the bridegroom finally came. The five foolish virgins were excluded from the wedding feast. They didn't make it. So there was a 50% loss ratio. That should get our attention real fast. There is a warning in this text for everyone. For the ten virgins are the whole church on earth. That's right. The oil is faith. The bridegroom is Christ. His delay is the age in which we are living today. Watch, pray, and be ready at all times for the second coming of Christ. And see, as we look around, I'm not sure the church of Jesus Christ is ready. Because there's a lot of things going on in the world today and, and here in the United States, but the church is silent. The church isn't, um, you know, outspoken and, 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 and being salt and light. Salt is a preservator, and that's what the church always brings up, but they avoid the other property of salt. It, it's also an irritant. And they don't want to talk about that. And they don't want to adhere to that. You pour salt on a wound, what happens? It stings. And so the church is to be this healthy irritant to a sinful world. It doesn't want to be. It wants to play the political card. It doesn't want to offend people. We have pastors that won't preach sermons like they ought to be preached because they're afraid they're going to offend somebody. So is the church prepared? No, it's not especially in the United States. Other countries more so, but not in the United States. So there is good news in this text. Although everyone waits a long time, the bridegroom eventually does come. The doors are open wide. wide. Those who are ready, those who are trusting in Jesus are ushered in. Many, so many from north and south and east and west. The feast begins, there's music, there's laughter, there's singing. And this takes place in heaven. But there's the other 50% don't because they're not prepared. They fall away. You know, they don't adhere to the truth of Scripture. Um, they compromise the word and, you know, they, they, they embrace false teaching. And so the church becomes powerless. So we need to take heart. Um, if we continue to trust in the Lord and continue to proclaim his gospel and, 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 and declare our, our refuge in him, uh, we will be there too. So we all trust in Jesus. And we were baptized and we heard the proclamation of the gospel. We receive his sacraments. And that's why you need to be diligent to make word and sacrament ministry a vital part of your life. Because when you stay away, and the more you stay away, the easier it is. And you drift away and you fall away. Satan, you know, doesn't just, you know, you go to bed tonight and you wake up lost. It's too obvious. He's a deceiver, master deceiver. So it takes a little time. Yeah, I stay away and just keep staying away. COVID was a big uh, acclamation for Satan. And so now people think that they've got a valid excuse to stay away and they can trump the COVID card. And so they stay away from church. And they do it all the time. And these are Christians manufacture all kinds of excuses, you know, which is what they are. Because for things that people want to do, they make a point to get them done. Church attendance? Nah. It's not important. So, Christians, especially in America, need to wake up. They're sound asleep. They're the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3 to the max. And what did Jesus say about that church in Laodicea in Revelation 3? This is Jesus. He talks about seven churches. Only one did he have anything good to say about it. Everything else he had problems with. And these are churches. The Laodicean church, he says, you know, I wish you were either hot or cold. In other words, all the way for me or totally against me. But because you're lukewarm, you just want to play the political card and, and just, you know, straddle the fence he said, you make me sick. I'm going to just vomit you right out of my mouth. That's Jesus. So, you know, right now, God doesn't have a whole lot of good things to say towards how the church is behaving. 
We need to be salt and light. Preserve the teachings of the gospel, but then also be that healthy irritant. Say, hey, well, look, we're not going to allow false teaching to take place. And, you know, we, we need to speak up. We need to take our stand and we need to promote the gospel and not compromise one iota. And if that offends everybody, then so be it. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, who cares what Washington, D.C. says and psychologists and everybody else? <laughs> you know, who cares? They're going to go by the wayside. All right. So allow me to please pray. So Lord Jesus, how we look forward to your coming. I pray that's an honest statement. Please help us to stay awake and watch. Amen. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so we cry to you, O Lord, in the morning our prayers come before you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit because our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Every day we will bless you and we will praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems our lives from the pit and he crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cries come to you. And so let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for chiming in worldwide, no matter where you may be, to peace of the word this morning. Pray it's been a blessing for you, and I pray that it's been an encouragement to you uh, in a certain way as well to watch, to stay awake, and to be alert, and to uh, remain steadfast in the love, grace, and mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lynn Lawrence, good good morning and good to see you this morning chiming in from Benson, Arizona. Thank you so much. We have a change in the weather uh, occurring today. In fact, it's probably going to start very soon. We've got a, a front moving in. It's going to drop temperatures about 10, 15 degrees perhaps. And uh, so we're going to have some winds and what have you coming in from the West Coast. So uh, today is going to be a it's going to, it's a fast moving front, but nonetheless, it's going to be changing things in a little bit. So, but it's still a good day to, to, uh, uh, enjoy the blessings of our Lord. And I pray that you would do that. And so the flaps have been retracted and so has the gear. And I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies. <laughs>